Ready over there? Are they sponsored? Ready over there? <laughs> Not yet, bro, but try to get a sponsorship. I'm saying, JP, tell him. Tell him to sponsor us, dude. Pretty Celsius, sponsor the Frequency Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking of the Frequency Podcast, welcome back, guys. We got another one. We got a very special one today because we managed to get this kid out of the theme park into the studio. Today's guest is JP Land. What's up, everyone? Thanks for being here, bro. Crack this open. Cheers, man. Boom. How to bust out the HHN hoodie for this one, man. I feel um, a little underdressed. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, you live theme park every day. Today is an exception, all right? Yeah. But speaking of HHN, that's where we met. Yeah. Which actually makes your bio 100% true. You probably <laughs> met me at a theme park. It's, I'm, I'm happy to have you on, dude. I want to dive into a lot of amusement park shit, career stuff, just everything that's happening in JP's land. But for the people that don't know who you are, can you go ahead, give us a little bio of who you are, the JP lore? Yeah, totally. So for the past like nine years, I've been covering Universal and expanding into Disney, I uh, film like update vlogs, talk about new rides, new things coming to the parks. Um, I just have a lot of fun with what I do. Um, it's not like too complicated. When you look at the channel, it's very transparent. Like you already know what's up. Okay, <laughs> there you go. You said you've been doing this for nine years, bro. Yeah. So it's actually funny. Um, when I was like 10 years old, or even younger, uh, my, my dad started bringing me into the theme parks. He used to work at Universal um, in the 90s, and he would show me like a lot of pictures, a lot of videos, you know, the jazz. And I'm like, you know what? When I grow old, I want to show my kids what Universal used to look like. Like they used to have like a Flintstones show. They used to have like Terminator. and Dude, they had like House of Horrors. Like was, the maze that you could so walk cool. through. Yeah. You know, I never got into horror until I was like 15, but... It was a acquired taste. Yeah. <laughs> you had to grow yeah, up a yeah. little bit. Yeah, so I'm like, you know, I'm just going to start a YouTube channel. Uh, it wasn't going to be like anything serious. Just like go around the theme parks, film shit. And um, that's how I started the channel. And then around the time Jurassic Park closed, that's where things started like picking up. I started growing a following. People started walking up to me. They're like, yo, aren't you JP Land? I'm like, this is weird. This is weird. <laughs> You're like a local celebrity, bro. You're like, what the heck? <laughs> From there, I've just seen growth. Um, now, uh, I just finished up my freshman year of college. And uh, I majored uh, business economics. And I minored uh, digital marketing. I went through UCLA's extension program. And uh, I learned a lot a lot. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you a little taste of that later on in the podcast. Okay. But <laughs> <laughs> He's like teasing it right now. He's like, that's a sneak peek of what's to come. It's a little marketing strategy. Keep the viewer engaged, you know? There you go. <laughs> and the host. Because now I'm like, wait, what is this? He's going to lay down some nuggets, bro. <laughs> but if you just graduated your little program, little program, call it your collegiate program, bro. That means you started YouTube when you were what? Nine, 10? 10, Yeah. That's, I'm 19. I'm young. <laughs> yeah, dude, you're the youngest legend doing it out here. I found out, I think, last year, last like season of HHN, that you were 18 at the time. And I was like, what the heck, bro? That's crazy. Yeah, a lot of people are surprised. They always think I'm like tw in my mid-20s. I'm like, uh. You're like, do I look that old, bro? <laughs> I'm short, bro. <laughs> He's like, is my hair graying out? What the fuck's going on? <laughs> no, that's crazy, man. So you said you kind of wanted to get into it because your father introduced you to that and you kind of wanted to show your kids what the parks used to look like, which, I mean, when you do have kids, bro, they're going to have a lot of content to sift through. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have them actually take over the JP Land channel. As soon as they turn, like, 12, you're in, you're in. You're in, kid. No, 10, just like you. You got to follow in your father's footsteps. Yeah, I actually have no idea where YouTube is going to be in, I don't know, when am I going to have kids? Uh, 20 years? Mm -hmm. 20 years from now? Um I have no idea where YouTube's going to be because we have TikTok, we have Instagram. You think YouTube's like, like on the chopping block? Yeah, I think so. I feel like every day it's becoming less and less uh, relevant. Um, I started posting reels on Instagram. I know you talked about that uh, yeah. in a few other podcasts and uh, I've actually seen a lot of growth through Instagram. Really? Yeah. That's crazy because I feel like a lot of people struggle on Instagram the most to achieve growth or just to grow any sort of views, audience, whatever it is. What's been working for you? What strategies have been working on IG? 
I'll, I'll go back into YouTube first because it started with YouTube. Um, I started growing because I started posting YouTube shorts mm -hmm. and uh, I noticed the target demographic. This actually scares me a little bit. It's between 10 and 17 year olds. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, well, I can't just go around, start drop, start dropping F-bombs. Um, I'm going to try to... Yeah, sorry, kids. I tend to cuss a lot. I got to say their <laughs> mouth. But. I bet a bunch <laughs> of kids are going to be watching this, but whatever. <laughs> um, I'll keep it PG then. We'll tone it back a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> but I noticed my, my demographic was between 10 and 17 year olds. So I'm like, okay, what do kids like? And uh, theme parks, not so much. Really? Yeah. Um, what so do like, kids like then? I, th I thought kids would love theme parks. No, I noticed like kids love Coco Melon and like dumb shit. <laughs> I'm like, like, okay, so how can I implement <laughs> He's this? He's like, how do I the... become a Coco Melon content channel, bro? <laughs> it's, so it's either that or... Um, a lot of a lot of kids nowadays have a very short attention span, so I'm like, okay, what can I do? What can I do? Um, I thought about my options. I had Waterworld at Universal. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen Waterworld? Have I seen Waterworld, bro? I love that show. It's a cr it's crazy, crazy show. Yeah, it's a crazy show. So I'm like, let me just post a Waterworld short. See how it does. Um, I, you know the fire dive, the guy that just jumps off the the highest yeah, point yeah. of Waterworld. Way to spoil it, JP. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> So there's this point in the show where this guy jumps off from the highest point of Waterworld. So I'm like, okay, uh, I'm just going to post that on YouTube. That video has 205 million views. Damn! <laughs> I gained like 200,000 subscribers out of that. From one video alone? Yeah. That's insane, bro. And that was just a short? Yeah. So yeah. shorts are the future right now, pretty much. I think much. so. Yeah, but I think they are dying out. I think more creators are, are looking into Instagram now because Instagram introduced like the bonus reels and stuff. What's um, a bonus reel? So when you hit like 10,000 followers or something, Instagram gives you a lot of like creator options. They open up a marketplace where people can, uh, different companies and brands can reach out to you mm -hmm. and uh, you can start promoting their products. Uh, they also have Instagram bonus reels or whatever. And I just got that recently. Uh, this week, and I made like maybe fifteen hundred just on Instagram. Really? Yeah. Dang, bro. So I'm implementing some of the things I learned from UCLA and and uh, some of the things I learned from YouTube and putting it into into Instagram now. And uh, this week alone, I gained like uh, twenty to thirty thousand followers. I had like twelve thousand followers originally on Instagram. And dude, that is crazy. And I know this is like factual because when I hit you up to come on this podcast, it was Monday of this week. It's Friday right now. And you had around 20K on IG. And then I followed up with you today and you were at 40K. And I was like, what happened to this man in the span of a week, bro? Yeah, it's crazy. Um, but short form does scare me a little bit. Why so? Everyone's attention span is becoming less and less. Mm -hmm. uh, I look on YouTube now. Uh, if I have a pretty bad short, like a, a short that didn't really perform well, look at where they're watching. They're only sticking around for two seconds. <laughs> I see attention okay, span so of a flea, dog. What scares me is people are applying that attention span into different things like school, relationships. Relationships so is a big how one. does the future look like with the new Gen Z? With the generation of iPad babies, bro. Yep. It scares me. I, I, I'm assuming people are not going to get into community service. Like who's going to pick up our trash on the streets? Who's going to take care of our funeral services and stuff? Bro, there's going to be trash <laughs> and dead bodies on the streets and kids doing TikTok dances right next to it or in front of it or something, bro. Yeah. I, I think this is only like the U.S. I thought I saw a cat. <laughs> you probably did. Oh, no, um, not right there. But I do got two <laughs> cats in here. So I hope you're not allergic. No, uh, uh, just a little bit. But all right. I'll, I'll be right. fine. I'll be fine. I should probably have like a, a thing of Benadryls here, bro. Yeah, if you see my eyes uh, turning red, I'm not high. I just, uh, <laughs> I'm just very allergic to cats. There you go. <laughs> With the iPad babies and these short attention spans, you mentioned that it's going to obviously cause people to not want to do a lot of stuff. You touched on relationships, which is a big one. I feel like Gen Z is already struggling immensely to even form genuine connections or genuine intimate relationships with people because people get so tired they jump into something yeah. once the spark goes away they're like what's next yeah it's yeah. that next dopamine hit well, you it's know? either that or if you've ever been on tinder or bumble it's just like people trying to hook up yeah it's not um it's not like a great place to find a real relationship is that something jp's looking for right now no <laughs> no, no. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah i'm me. actually i'm actually talking to someone oh are you really yeah it's going good 
it's going good. We've we've gone a, on a few dates and um, where'd you take her? Universal? Uh, not yet, actually. Not okay. Yet. We uh, that's we when met you on know Bumble. it's real. When we you know it's real. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I found out she goes to the same gym as me. That's crazy. So did you meet her at the gym? Oh yeah. no, you met her on Bumble. Well, I met her on on Bumble, and literally the same day she walked up to me. She's like, "You're you're JP, right?" I'm like, "Yeah." I'm, I'm like, "You look really familiar." She's like, "Yeah, we met on Bumble." I'm like, oh. She's probably going to be listening to this podcast. Dude, I probably know <laughs> her, which is crazy. Because I know a lot of people at that gym. That'd be so weird if I knew her, bro. Yeah. But whoever it is, I hope you're happy. I'm glad that's going on. I think it's funny, too, because I see you do Q&As on Instagram every now and then. Yeah. And most of the times, people ask good questions. But a lot of the times, it's just a bunch of thirsty mommies. Like, yeah, like, JP, you're so cute. Oh, my God, you're hot. Give me a chance. <laughs> like, ladies, relax. No, I wish it was ladies. Like, the amount of guys in my DMs. Really? That's scary, dude. You are a good-looking dude, bro. <laughs> you're gay bait, bro. They're going to eat you up. <laughs> <laughs> that scares me a little bit, but, you know, whatever. Uh, it's 2020. It's a compliment. It's a compliment, if anything. Yeah, man. If yeah. anything, it just shows, like, you could pull anything. Yeah. Guys, girls, they, thems. <laughs> animals like whoever dude jp got it like that <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about amusement parks actually before we get into amusement parks you cover universal and you cover disney as well which one do you like better this is really controversial everyone's gonna hate me here yeah this is a hot take right now <sighs> probably disney really yeah Listen, bro, I'm not going to be offended, but you just got to elaborate on why. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like Universal is so small. There's only so much you could do. And I go there every day. Yeah. So when I go to Disney, I went yesterday. It feels like a just a refresher. It's, it's chill. I think the only annoying part about Disney, a lot of people are going to be offended, <laughs> are the Disney adults. <laughs> <laughs> That's hella funny, bro. My sister is a Disney adult and they do. They live, breathe and die by the sword of Disney, bro. Yeah, um, so I won't I won't jump into that too much, but <laughs> it, Disney is definitely a breather. It's chill. There's a lot of rides. You could just relax. Mm -hmm. um, they have a lot of like really good food. I went to Lamplight Lounge. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been there, dude? I haven't been to Disney since they opened up um, Galaxy's Edge. Oh, jeez. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I gotta take you one of these days, dude. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Lamplight Lamplight Lounge is chill. Like you sit right by the water by Incredicoaster. Okay. You could have like a little snack. They have a ton of drinks and it's it's sick. It's so cool. Okay. What's your favorite ride? <sighs> Small World. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. No, just, I was about to say we're the same person. That's my favorite <laughs> really? ride. I okay. love it. No, it used to be Small World, uh, but they opened the runaway railway ride. Have you heard of it? I saw um his because the reason I don't, don't go to Disney too much, obviously, I, I struggle to find time, but also I feel like their prices are so ridiculous now. But when I, I saw they were opening um, Mickey's Railway or whatever it is, yeah, I was hyped because I saw the ride like POV in Orlando, the one they have out there. And I was like, this is really high tech stuff with their animatronics and their projections and everything. I was like, this is incredible. No, it's a great ride. It's like Rise of Resistance on crack. I haven't done Rise of Resistance. Bro, you want to hear something? A scam. I feel like I got scammed, Disney. I went to Disneyland the weekend that uh, Galaxy's Edge opened. And I okay. didn't even know. I just kind of planned it with this girl I was talking to at the time. And we pulled up. And they were like, because you're staying in a Disney hotel, you guys get first VIP access to Galaxy's Edge. And we were like, what even is that? I didn't even know they opened it. So we went. But since it was the first week, Rise of the Resistance wasn't open yet. It was oh, just the Millennium Falcon. I see. Yeah. So, and I was the engineer on that thing. So I was just in the back, like, oh, that's such a boring that's position. The worst position. <laughs> <laughs> I love pilot. You know, when I go with my friends, the main goal is to make it such an obnoxious ride for everyone else around us. So when we get pilot, we try to make it terrible. You just crash into <laughs> just all this. Crash into everything. <laughs> crash into ships, stormtroopers, just whatever's in the way, bro. That's funny. Yeah. Because when I went on, I think we had like a three-year-old that was navigating it. Oh. And he w didn't even know what was going on, bro. He couldn't even piece together a sentence. So like <laughs> we were just sitting there crashing, falling. I got off the thing with a headache. But I was I still gave him a little fist bump. I was like, hey, good job, kid. You almost killed all of us, but good job. Well, that definitely made your position a lot more fun. You had more buttons. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, we're going down. We're going down. <laughs> I was back there working overtime, bro. Let's jump into Universal a little bit. Okay. Um. 
there's a lot that's happening at Universal right now. Mm-hmm. And I, as, if you don't know, I'm sure you can check out JP's YouTube channel and he can give you the rundown on everything that's happening. You're one of the main sources I go to for my theme park news as well. So, new coaster coming. Oh, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Oh, yeah. I'm excited. This is going to be... I don't count Mummy Ride as a roller coaster. I don't count the little Hippogriff Ride as a roller coaster. Nah, mid. <laughs> this is going to be Universal's very first roller coaster over here in the Hollywood counterpart. I feel like it's finally they're finally going to have like an e-ticket attraction, like yeah. something big. It's going to be really cool. People aren't a fan of the theme or like the rumored theme. It's rumored to be Fast and Furious, yeah. which I don't mind. If it's going to be like themed to Tokyo Drift and, and stuff, I'm all about it. Like the coaster carts are going to turn while you're like going upside down and shit. It's going to be crazy. Hopefully they play this song, dun, 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 the Tokyo Drift song, bro, while it's going. That or like Gasolina while you're, while you're drifting around the theme park. Yeah. That'd be sick. So that'd be so dancing? cool. You're if they dancing? don't play that song while you're on the ride, that's a missed opportunity. Or they could pull a Disney and just have a bunch of different songs while you're on the ride. Like uh, every time you ride, it's a different ride experience. The car turns into different directions. It plays different songs every time you ride. Or they could have Vin Diesel and The Rock take turns sitting next to you every time you ride, bro. Oh, my God. Yeah, they could just hire paid actors. <laughs> For real. Imagine. They don't even get paid actors. They just make, like, weird suits of them. I so feel like that like, gives you a job now. Just shave your head. True. I'll be in there. Look like, up. <laughs> this ride's for family only. For family. But, no, I'm so excited. They tore down uh, animal actors, special effects, and that little store that sat in between them. Mm-hmm. Everything's just being flattened out now. It's a weird, really weird sight to see because they've those stages have been around since I was a kid. So, do you have any like sentimental value to them? Are you sad to see them go? Um, special effects, not so much because uh, they used to have special effects in a different location, and it was like yeah. a whole 30 minute experience. You would walk into different rooms, you'd learn more about movies. That this one was newer, cool. This newer version was like whatever. Do, do you remember when they had Backdraft, or were you a little too? Oh, young no, for that? yeah, yeah, yeah. I started going to Universal when I was three, so I, I saw a so lot. So, you of know things. everything, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, Backdraft was crazy. The pre show was really boring, and I've never seen the movie, but it was crazy. Yeah, I remember that was like. My first theme park memory really was backdraft and being on that little platform and seeing like the barrels blow up and all this fire get like thrown in your face and yeah. stuff. I, I'm surprised out of every attraction at Universal, that's like the only one that didn't burn down. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, bro. What the heck is King Kong doing? He's down there <laughs> lighting blunts or something, burning down every time. How do you like that new King Kong attraction? The 3D one? The 3D the one. The 360 3D. I think it's. I think it's incredible, honestly. I love to go through that section. I like the how the tram moves. I like how it operates. Something I don't like is Fast and Furious basically stole the same premise. It mm. stole King Kong's thunder. And yeah. I think it's just kind of a universal sentiment. No pun intended right there. <laughs> but it's a universal sentiment that like Fast and Furious on the tram is dog water, bro. Like nobody really likes it. I like it because of how bad it is. It, like, but that's the thing. It's like, it's good because it's so bad, you know, which I don't think they would have. That's the the vibe they were going for. Definitely not. Like I watched this documentary on YouTube. You could watch it on Universal's channel, but they were talking about how like groundbreaking of an attraction supercharged is. And I'm like, really? really? <laughs> <laughs> it's like we put a lot of time and effort to simulate the tram going 120 miles an hour in downtown LA. I'm like, first of all, you can't even go 30 miles an hour in downtown LA. <laughs> That's if you're lucky, bro. Most of the times you just bumper to bumper. So they really accomplished the impossible. Yeah. Shout out <laughs> Universal. No, I hope <laughs> what I hope if I could just like be CEO of Universal for a day, I would build a incredibly badass coaster themed like what they're doing to Fast and Furious. But then to make up for this new one, I would just demolish whatever's happening with the uh, existing Fast and Furious. What's it called? Supercharged? I would get rid of Supercharged, add something else to the tram, or this is another speculation that I heard your homeboy Cali Bay talking about. And he was talking about that down in the tram. You know how they have that massive blue green screen that they use? Right. It was used in uh, that movie that they did where they landed the plane in the Hudson River and Mm -hmm. stuff. They can turn that into a brand new themed land and like the tram can drop you off there. Something can take you there. They were thinking, um, what is that? They have it in Universal Orlando. It's Harry Potter. Mm -hmm. Diagon Alley. Diagon Alley. 
What are your thoughts on that? Is that out of the stretch of like out of the realm of possibility or do you think it's possible? What I've been saying for a while is they could just relocate the studio tour to somewhere somewhere else. Like maybe put it down in the lower log, get rid of a soundstage or two. Mm-hmm. And uh, tear down Supercharged, tear down Falls Lake, uh, tear down like all of that area and expand the theme park. I think it would be, especially out here in California, like if Universal really wants to give Disney a run for their money, mm-hmm. they have to do something massive like that. I yeah. think the roller coaster is going to help. But I think another theme land, I mean, obviously they just opened Nintendo World and it's yeah. amazing. We could talk about that a little bit too. <laughs> but let's finish up this little, this train of thought. Personally, I wouldn't want to see Diagon Alley. That land opened almost four year, uh, 10 years ago now. And uh, I want a new experience. Yeah. I want something unique to Hollywood. Uh, Universal has the tendency of just replicating attractions, cloning them, putting them basically in every theme park. I'm like, okay, if or you just want people... Or just re-theming. I feel like that's a big thing they do. Like yeah. Like from um, Back to the Future into Simpsons, right? Yeah. Like they'll just re- use the same layout and just re-theme it. I don't really like screen rides that much, to be honest. And I think now they're starting to realize that people don't really mess with them too much. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of starting to switch their style. Yeah. Especially in Orlando, they got like Velocicoaster. They got Hagrid's, you know, all these roller coasters, these big like thrill attractions. So, yeah, man, let's get rid of the screens, bro. Yeah. That's another universal sentiment. (laughs) (laughs) But what what IP would you want to see down there? Down at the Universal. Hmm. I don't know. Anything horror would be cool. I feel like they could talk in my language now, bro. (laughs) I feel like they could repurpose um, E.T. and uh, turn it into like a Stranger Things ride. Got the bicycles. You could run into Demogorgons, Vecna. Just imagine Stranger Things into a theme park attraction. That would be crazy. If it happens, bro, they better cut you a percentage of that. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I just threw the idea out there. If they, I wish there was a way of me like trademarking that there you idea. go <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna send him this podcast bro i'm gonna email just whoever i need to the ceo of universal will be like yo check out my boy jp's idea but another one that's destined to go pretty soon is the simpsons right oh yeah because i, I think that's next on the chopping block it's getting old it's, it's such a bad attraction and they don't even have the rights to it anymore disney has it yeah uh, i think as soon as their contract expires they're probably gonna tear that land land down uh, I mean, they're building Fast and Furious in that spot already. They're probably just going to repurpose the entire area uh, after they're done with that ride. Too Fast and Furious? Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking the same thing. I wanted to ask you if, by uh, the grace of God, it doesn't become a Fast and Furious area, what would you make it? <sighs> back to the future. Again? Bring back Back to the Future, turn the whole area into Hill Valley, and uh, bring a Fast and... F- I mean, not Fast and Furious. <laughs> back to the Future roller coaster. <laughs> That would be cool, dude. Yeah, Back to the Future is great. Here's the thing. Back to the Future, does a lot of the new generation know about it? These iPad babies with two-second attention spans, are they even going to know what Back to the Future is? Okay, so right now, I'll tell you this. With the girl I'm talking to, there's one deal breaker. She's never seen Back to the Future. Break up with her. (laughs) <laughs> no i'm kidding bro <laughs> if anything that's just it. you could be like it's okay baby we can watch it together Ooh, have a nice little movie night there you go there you go bro i set up the layup <laughs> for you yeah so i don't know i think it's a it's a little mix i i've talked to a lot of people and they've they've seen they've seen back to the future mm-hmm. um so i don't know we'll see is that one of your favorite movies back to the future yeah that is my favorite movie really <laughs> back to the future that's cool i could watch it over and over without getting bored you could go back to the future and watch it again, honestly. Yeah. That was a dumb joke. I'm sorry, guys. I won't, I won't <laughs> put you through so that bad. again. <laughs> Whoever's editing this video, just cut that Yeah, me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, dude, I'm going to cringe again while I'm editing it in post. But I was, I was going to ask you that because Universal, obviously, they have the studios down there. Mm-hmm. They make some of the best movies out. Same with Disney. Disney's a, a massive company known for their incredible movies. So what are some, besides Back to the Future, some of your favorite Universal flicks? And then what are some of your favorite Disney flicks? I like Jurassic Park a lot. And I like the first Jurassic World. But everything after the first Jurassic World is like kind of garbage. I haven't seen, I literally only watched the first Jurassic World. And same thing. I loved it, but I didn't watch the the other ones. Yeah, so like the original Jurassic Park trilogy, those are cool. Um, Transformers is cool as well. I I didn't watch the new movie that came out. Are you going to? maybe doesn't look that great <laughs> yeah i don't know how I've, how i feel about them turning optimus prime into a giant gorilla 
Did you see that in the trailer? No, I did see the giant gorilla, but I didn't know that was it's, Optimus Prime. It's Optimus Prime. <laughs> Whoa. Plot twist. Yeah, I'm making the same face, bro. It's what weird. the heck? I think they're trying to pull like a... I've, after No Way Home, they're trying to pull like a whole multiverse thing in all movies. Like Every movie, bro. Did you hear this theory that Nintendo, since Universal has Nintendo World now, Illumination is their property and they just dropped uh, the Nintendo movie, right? Or okay. Super Mario Bros. There is a theory right now that they are trying to create a cinematic Nintendo universe. And ev all of the movies are going to lead into a Super Smash Bros. movie. Oh, my God. Is that something you'd be interested in? I, like, what would they do? You're just going to see a bunch of, like, Nintendo characters die? <laughs> just fall into just the get, void? Just fall off the stage, blow up? Yeah, I could see it, though. I could see it. With the way that movies are making everything into a universe, I could see it, too. I just hope that Illumination doesn't do all of it. Because Nintendo does have some properties that are a little more serious and grounded. Okay. And if everything's in that illumination animation style, you know? No, they're just going to pull off a multiverse. Like, oh, they didn't die in this universe. All right, let's go switch up the universe. Talk about Link. What is it? Zelda. Link yeah. and Zelda. Talk about them. Even though they died in Smash Bros. You know, it's all right. It's <laughs> but it's okay. But it's they're a different still, universe. They're still alive in Hyrule, though. It doesn't <laughs> matter. You play video games at all? surprisingly no like i used to play it a lot as a kid i used to play like black ops and, and stuff okay um but recently no no video game has really stood out to me uh okay. now that they announced last of us coming to horror nights i might play last of us but it seems like a really long game like i was watching uh some of the the cinematic shots they had and it, there's like an hour long worth of just cinematic shots and i'm like oh boy it's a very narrative driven story but I heard it's great. I haven't played it either, but I heard it's incredible. Um, speaking of HHN, bro, that's your bread and butter right there, oh, huh? Oh, man. Are you going to ask me my speculation? That's yeah, exactly <laughs> what I'm about to ask oh, you. Boy. Okay. <laughs> so I feel like Universal hates me because of this. Last year, I talked about my speculation list, and it was very accurate to what happened. And it was so unintentional. Like, everyone thinks I leaked Every single maze that was coming to last year's Horror Nights. But it was just luck? It was just, I would go on like the the inside Universal forums. I would go into like different Discord servers, look at what people are talking about. I'm like, okay, this could this could happen. But um, there's certain things I like, like the weekend. I'm like, no way it's happening. But I, I'll throw it in my speculation list, you know, whatever. That's a maze that a lot of people were like, huh? Like the weekend? <laughs> like, okay. And then it happened and everyone was like, oh, let's do it. Yeah, I'm running with it. So after I talked about my speculation list, they just stopped inviting me to events. Oh, for real? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm supposed to have a call with Universal soon. They um, took it personally, bro. I, <laughs> I feel like she's going to bring up, we're not inviting you to the events because you're leaking everything. I'm like, okay, but it's like, They're about I, to I'm just grabbing it from other people. <laughs> They're about to sit you down in a board <laughs> meeting like, JP, we can't have you uh, jeopardizing this company like that <laughs> um but if anything i feel like that that promotes the company it really does and dude universal's cash cow is hhn that is one of their biggest events if not their biggest event all year and so to have hype around it to have a community that's like die hard fans like that's so good for the brand that's so good oh, yeah. for business and all the speculation and stuff keeps Universal's name in people's mouths, on people's Yeah, it keeps minds. it relevant. I don't know why they're so dude. against speculation maps. And I guess it was a leak. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to happen. Like, I don't really know too much about this year's Horror Nights. They've been pretty, like, quiet about it. They haven't given us any announcements. Take everything with a grain of salt, people. <laughs> um, I feel like that was very targeted. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, I feel like they should bring, like, Five Nights at Freddy's to, to this year's Horror Nights. There, I would. Here's the thing. I would love to see it. I think they would want to release the movie first, though. Maybe. Well, I don't know. Like Last of Us is going to be based on the video game rather than the TV show. So I don't. Uh, they could possibly just turn this year's the the theme of this year's events into like video games. That would be cool. I would like to see it. Five Nights at Freddy's has such a, a like crazy fan base, bro. All the iPad babies. Oh, <laughs> they yeah, all love Five Nights at Freddy's. I bro. mean, the weekend was a hit. Hit. Year. It was sold out every night. the 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 whole event was sold out every single night. Mm -hmm. If they brought Five Nights at Freddy's, if they brought Last of Us, those have huge, huge fan bases. I feel like I don't, I don't see why not. Maybe it's this year. Maybe it's next year. Five Nights at Freddy's is like yeah. great IP. 
Great IP. I think they absolutely will do it eventually. I think it'd probably be next year's event, though. This year with The Last of Us. D- dude, here's some crazy speculation that blew my mind. Demon Slayer. You hear about this? Yeah, I don't I don't know much about anime. I don't so. know anything about anime, <laughs> but I heard they were doing demon well they were doing. Again, take it with a grain of salt, people. I don't know. But Demon Slayer, like, it's an anime. How do you portray an anime in a haunt environment? I don't know. I don't know. Um, you know, have you seen the Babadook? I love the Babadook. One of my favorite horror films. Uh so last year my my friends at um uh, uh, Twisted Haunt Productions. They're like a little haunt uh, production thing. Uh, they turned the Babadook, uh, Carrie, and uh, some other movie. I think it was Sleepaway Camp into a haunted house for for like uh, June for Pride. And it was one of the coolest thing ever. Uh, coolest things ever because they did a really interesting take on the Babadook. They made it over the book. So you're walking straight into the pages. You see words on the walls. You see like little animatronics of the the Babadook on the page. And then he would pop up from like corners and stuff. And I feel like if they were to make an anime haunted house, they could follow the same type of um, the same type of style, like same putting formula, you through the yeah. through the pages. Are, are animes usually based on like um, what are they called? The the manga books, comic. Yeah, yeah, manga books. Yeah, yeah, manga books. And then the manga book usually gets turned into a series. So, I mean, they could pull kind of like a Last of Us, like, this isn't on the series, this is on the video game. They could be like, this isn't on the series, this is on the manga book type of thing. Mm-hmm. Which, that would be a, a genuinely cool idea, walking through pages. Yeah, I, I feel like they could pull it off like that, but... Um, That's what they did for Bride in 2021. Yeah. Yeah, you were walking through, like, this book. It was more of, like, a show than a than a maze. Yeah. I really like that about Bride. Yeah. So, let's talk about HHN career-wise for you. Okay. Um... I, I, I got to assume that your channel sees a lot of traffic during that time oh of the year. Oh my gosh. That's like my, that's my Christmas. It's so, really? <laughs> that's when I make money. That's when I gain new audiences. That's when I stand out out of every content creator. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I like to have a lot of fun with Horror Nights. I make a lot of vlogs, a lot of reviews. I, I keep it interesting. I, you probably know this. I go to Horror Nights every night. Every day, bro. I yeah. see you there every day. I'm like, what up, JP? <laughs> <laughs> Another one. <laughs> You're in the weekend maze. You're just scaring me constantly. Yeah, dude. The 3 a.m. IHOP trips are going to be so fun this year. Yeah, bro. You're always invited, man. That's how I met you was uh, at Walter's Gate. I was like, who's this guy? And they were like, that's JP. And then you came to IHOP. And then I sat next to you and a couple of your friends. And I was like, so what do you do, bro? I, I didn't know anything about you. I didn't know who you were, what you did. And I was just like, YouTube, that's cool, man. How's that going? <laughs> and then I was like, oh, shit. Very successful. Good for you, bro. So, yeah, man. But you were talking about shorts. I assume a lot of shorts coming out for HHN. Oh, yeah. Uh, last year, I wasn't that big on shorts. Like, mm-hmm. I started towards the end of the event. But I didn't really capitalize on it. This year, I'm going to milk the shit out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go so hard on shorts. Um, like, with the ceremony. I feel like that's huge. That's big. Uh, it, it was really big long form wise, but imagine in a short. Oh my gosh. Who edits all your content? You do? I have an editor and I have a manager, but I usually, I, I like to edit myself because um, I like putting out content like as soon as I film it. Yeah. So uh, as soon as I film it at the parks, I go home, edit it and then post it. Whenever I feel like there's like a, like something I'm talking about that's coming in the future, I don't really feel like it's, it's urgent to talk about it, so I send it over to my editor, and he could put a little more effort into, into the vlog or uh, video. There you go. I feel like that kind of relieves some stress or takes a weight off your shoulder too because yeah. editing, for everybody trying to be a content creator out there, is the most time-consuming part of the job. Everybody sees like, oh, he's at theme parks, he's having fun, he's doing all this stuff, but they don't see the hours you spend behind your laptop cranking out videos, shorts, everything. And now with with... So many social medias and so many outlets, bro. Like you, like I'm like for this podcast, for example, Mm -hmm. I'll edit that hour long podcast and then I'll edit clips from it. I'll edit a promo and I'll make sure everything's formatted for TikTok, shorts, this, YouTube, whatever. Like it takes up a lot of time, man. So I do got to give you a pat on the back for that because if you've been doing it for nine years, you must have it down to science. AI is becoming huge now. Uh, it's gotten so advanced to where I don't have to do voiceovers anymore for certain videos and people wouldn't know. Like, text to speech? Uh, yeah, of text your to voice? speech of my voice. 
know we're living in 2030, bro. Can I show this? Yes, please do. Please do, bro, because AI is, it really is revolutionary, man. I don't like, know if you, you want to edit this in. Yeah, send, send it to me, but you could play it as well. Any secrets you probably didn't know, part one. Tucked away in Cinderella Castle is an exclusive suite that's off limits to the public. This opulent hideaway was originally built for Walt Disney himself, but remained unfinished until it was... That's AI? That's AI. Oh my god, bro. All of that is AI. The script, my voice... The captions, I didn't I didn't use CapCut. There's this uh app called captions.ai. Captions.ai. Yeah, go search it up. Yeah. Everything was done by AI. And now Instagram is giving creators or not Instagram, but like third party sites are giving uh creators the ability to automate their content. Mm -hmm. So just uh if I have free time, I post a bunch of my my uh shorts and and videos on onto that platform and then uh they write the script for you. They add emojis. They add hashtags. They do everything for you. They just automate it once a day, twice a day, whatever time you want it to post, it'll do it for you. That's so crazy. I'm over here taking notes, bro. I'm like, Whoa. yeah, <laughs> it's That's um, AI is, is crazy. Insanity. I feel like people don't realize how, I mean, they kind of do, but they don't realize how fast AI is progressing right now, especially I feel like it was a big wake up call when. Uh, are you familiar with the AI Drake song that came out? Is it like Search and Rescue or something? Is that what it's called? Search and Rescue is an actual Drake song that came oh, out. Oh, that one sounded like AI. <laughs> I mean, it was it was actually kind of bad. Just uh, casually throw shade at Drake. <laughs> like, hey, bro, step it up. Like, it just sounds so offbeat. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah, I believe it. Like, uh, they're turning Kanye's voice into different songs. They're making their own Kanye songs with his voice. Uh, AI is going to be crazy in the next few years. Yeah, dude. Speaking of AI... Free Apex Marketing Discord in the description, guys. Go check it out. Um, these guys, Apex Marketing, they literally are all about AI. So they have all the newest softwares. They got all the newest shit. They're, they're kind of putting me on a lot of stuff. But yeah, dude, with the Drake thing that happened, it was some kid on TikTok just made a burner account called Ghostwriter something. And he had a bed sheet on like he was a ghost, right? Mm -hmm. And he dropped an AI Drake song that he made and weekend the weekend was on the hook. Okay. And it blew up, but like went super viral, couple million plays, views, everything. And it was all everybody was talking about. It got so big to the point that Universal Music Group, which is Drake's uh, label or whoever he signed with, came at them with an actual lawsuit and was like, you have to take this down because this compromises our client. And Whoa. it just kind of opened up everyone's eyes to like how good this technology is getting, you know? When AI can make a better song than Drake. AI Drake can make a better <laughs> song than real ass Drake. That's crazy. Yeah. I feel like we could start bringing back uh, legends like Michael Jackson. We could. songs with Michael. But then AI it's like, Michael. is that right to do morally? Like, I'm, and I, here's the thing. I, I understand where you're coming from, but then mm -hmm. I could also see how people could be like, these... Technically, yeah, it's a new Michael Jackson song, but it's not from Michael Jackson. So it doesn't have the same way of thinking or the same character, that same like uh, creative spirit that he had, you know? I guess, but uh, I mean, I feel like artists nowadays are still sampling songs from Michael. They're still sampling his voice. Like, uh, I know there's a song from Drake uh, he made with Michael Jackson, but Michael Jackson is deceased now. So yeah. I don't know. Is it is it wrong or... Or would it be, would people actually enjoy that? Yeah, like they're they're cherishing his voice, they're cherishing his skill, and uh, continuing the legend. Yeah. Like, I feel like this new generation doesn't even know who Michael Jackson is. True, just like they don't know who Back to the, what Back to the Future is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is up, my floral freaks? I got an amazing opportunity for y'all today. For anybody that's a new marketer, small business, influencers out there, Apex Marketing is taking brand development to a whole new level. They are introducing a free Discord community, a game changer for anyone looking to make their mark in the digital world. This exclusive community is designed to provide you with valuable resources, expert advice, and a supportive network to help you thrive. Whether you're seeking guidance, social media strategies, website optimization, influencer marketing, anything, Apex Marketing's free Discord has got you covered. It's a hub of knowledge and collaboration that will elevate your skills and propel your brand forward. So don't miss out on this incredible opportunity. It is free, guys. It is a free 
Discord community. All links are below in the description, guys. Go ahead and check them out and take your career to the next level. You remember, this was a while back, but I remember when this came out, I was like, bro, this is a future, and I haven't seen it since. Hopefully, we can see it again. But Coachella one year had a hologram of Tupac perform. I saw that. That's sick. What the? Bro, Coachella, do that again. <laughs> what are we doing out here? Get Michael Jackson. Hologram Michael Jackson. There's I a, would see it. There's actually a show in Vegas. Uh, I don't know if it's still around. It's called Michael Jackson 1, and they have a hologram of Michael at the end of the show. And it was the coolest thing ever because uh, that technology wasn't really like relevant mm -hmm. for that time. Uh, now we have Fast and Furious Supercharged, which uses that technology. But, um, no, it was so cool seeing Michael right in front of me. I'm like, wow, is that him? I, it was mind-blowing. You're like, he's in the room with me, alive in the flesh, in the pixelated 4K flesh, bro. But what makes me really sad is before he passed, uh, he was going on tour. He was about to go on tour, and my dad promised me we would go see him. But then he passed away. I'm like, damn. So I feel like that made up for it in a, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I'm from is Vegas, dude. You like it out there? As soon as I'm old enough to gamble and like actually do stuff in Vegas, dude, I feel I, like it'll be a I forget lot how young you are. <laughs> yeah. yeah, bro. You can't do anything out there besides sip Capri Suns and chill by the pool, man. Circus, circus. Yeah. <laughs> That's sketch. The Adventure Hotel Dome. Park. <laughs> yeah, that place is falling apart, bro. I'm surprised Scary. it's still in business. Did you hear they do a Halloween event as well? The Fright Dome. <laughs> Come on down and visit the Fright Dome. Have dude. you ever been? <sighs> Every, every year. That was like our HHN was the Fright Dome. And I would always, bro, I would take dates there. I would go on like just with the homies, do whatever. But it is, I mean, back in the day, it was like I got scared. But I'm sure if I went now, being so spoiled living in California now with big events like HHN or I've never been to Disneyland, but I heard they have an incredible Halloween theme like Boogie Bash or oh, whatever yeah. it is. They actually just released tickets today. <laughs> really? Yeah. You copped them already? No. Oh. I don't know. I'm surprised. I was like, damn. I have to skip a Horror Nights night to go, and I, I don't know if I'm going to do it. Also, the tickets are $140 for a four-hour event, so... Yeah. I wish I had a uh, we'll drink. See. I wish I still had drink left so I could do a spit take. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man. I would go to the Fright Dome every now and then. Um, the thing is, I would go when I was so young, so I didn't hit a lot of the mazes because I was a little scaredy cat. Mm -hmm. And the scare zones were cool, but it was mainly like clowns and chainsaws and stuff. So, but yeah. <laughs> they can't really use IPs, right? They're not universal. No. So it's all like original content. That's and cool. I like that. Yeah. Dude, I like original content. Have you ever been to Knott's? Scary Farm? Never. Oh my God! It's a million times better than Horror Nights. They're not gonna really. They're, they're not gonna like me saying that. Hot take <laughs> another one. Okay, I feel like that's another reason they don't invite me out because I'm very like true about what I say. Like Speak I don't, truth, I don't kiss JP. ass. I don't kiss ass. I don't say, oh, this was amazing. Oh, uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space is my favorite maze. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I if something is genuinely bad, I don't want to say it's good. Yeah. Um, as you should, bro. You have such a big audience. Like you, you want to be honest with them. I like being very genuine. When yeah. I film videos, like the person you see in my videos, that's me in real life. I like that. Transparency takes you a long way, bro. Especially in these industries. So, what's so special about Knots? Is it just that they have original IPs and and things? They have original IPs. They give their scare actors the freedom to scare wherever they want and however they want. So. You'll see uh, their scare actors slide in haunted houses. You'll see them, like, come out from, like, weird corners. They're, like, following you and, like, chasing you around the park and stuff. Yeah, and what I really like about it is it's not predictable. Like, they have a little scaremony thing, like Horror Nights, but their scare actors come from behind you. They come from the side of you. And you, you me being a Horror Nights fan, I, I only expect, expected them to run at me. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I saw them running from behind me, that threw me off, and I feel like that set the tone for the rest of the night. There you In go. In the mazes, they were coming out from under tables. I'm like, what? Horror Nights would never. <laughs> Horror Nights would never. So it actually had you on edge a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, and they didn't only have, like, trigger scares. They got really creative. They had a bungee jumper, like, come from the roof down and, like, jump right in front of me. I'm like, what the hell? This Dude. is, like... One thing I'd like to see Universal incorporate into their mazes, I'm pretty sure it's just they don't do it because it's probably a hazard or something. But I think they have IPs that are completely appropriate for it, like Creature from the Black Lagoon, let's say. Because they're, mm. they're always making Universal monster mazes, but they neglect half of their Universal monsters. Like, let's get the creature in there. Phantom of the Opera, like all these guys, which apparently is coming this year. I don't know if you heard about that. Uh, 
Which one, Creature? Uh, no, Phantom, Phantom of the Opera, yeah. I didn't hear about that. Weird speculation. Again, grain of salt, I feel like guys. they're going to be on your ass now. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're about to fire me, bro. Uh, again, Salt Bay. Take it, take it with a grain of salt. One thing I want to see them incorporate, and they could do it with Creature from the Black Lagoon, and I think Knotts does this, is sometimes you'll get into like a scene where it's underwater or it's like a swamp or something. And they have like these kind of like this layer of fog that you can't see. So it's like you're walking through yeah, water, and right? Just, like, and they just out. reach up or they jump out or they do something. And that's so scary, bro. Every time I walk through, I borderline, I'm, I'm turtling because half a shit's hanging out of my ass because I get so scared, bro. <laughs> it's but crazy. Like, they could incorporate scares like that, mazes like that, and really just take it to the next level. Yeah, I think they have a haunted house there called The Depths. Mm-hmm. And it's like about a sunken ship or something like that. I don't. I didn't really understand the story, but there's one scene where you're walking through the ship and the floor is tilting. The whole room is tilting. I'm like, this is at a theme park. Yeah. They, they don't have black walls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for context, uh, Horror Nights has like a lot of black walls or like unthemed walls. They, they just tend to do that a lot. They, they save, get, they they get a lot of heat for it too. I think, um, dude, the biggest offender last year was uh, what was the blumhouse one? Oh, yeah towards the yes. end it was just all black walls i was like dude let's let's dazzle these up a little bit let's yeah claim them up i said not right son come here boy oh <laughs> wow, you, just, you just pick him up he's like a rag doll bro he'd just be chilling wow everybody the real co-host nugget all right you want to go all right we tried. <laughs> <laughs> but, he's a little camera shy Let's jump into Disney a little bit, dude, okay. because Disney seems to be going through it right now. I don't know if you're aware or if you only stick to theme park stuff, but Disney, obviously, they had the whole CEO chaos that happened where they fired Bob Chapek, which was their CEO, okay. and they brought back their old uh, CEO, Bob Iger, out of retirement because they were like, bro, this is a sinking ship. You got to help us out. Mm-hmm. And they just had the Galactic Star Cruiser, which was a like they spent billions of dollars building this experience of a hotel that replicates you being in space, right? Like you're in a Star Wars themed experience. It wasn't even open for one year. They're shutting it down. Took a big loss financially. All their films lately have been kind of box office bombs. Not doing so well. So what are your thoughts on Disney right now, bro? Do you see that affecting the parks in any way? You know, I think they're still figuring it out. Uh, I think they're trying to answer their own question of where do, where do we see theme parks in five years? Mm-hmm. Like, how are we going to innovate? What's the next best, best thing? And I think Star Cruiser, it was a really good concept, but it, the only issue was it's a little too expensive. Bro, um, ridiculous. Two, I think two grand for, for two people in one room. And then it's like, it goes up. It's like four grand per person. Yeah. For four people. And it's, keep in mind, it's a three day event or a three day stay. Like two days. Yeah. Two days, three nights type of thing. It's, it's rough. Um, so I think that was the main issue with the Star Cruiser. Mm-hmm. And uh, it wasn't very popular because of the prices. I think um, another issue with it is it's more so like an experience. It wasn't like you could just check in, stay there, and do whatever. So it's an experience. And once you pay or shell out that money and do it once, what's the incentive to do it again? You know? You're like, okay, yeah. I saw it. It's cool. It was expensive. I don't have to go back. So you don't have a reoccurring guest coming or just people becoming regulars of the hotel, you know? Or if they do go, it's just way too expensive to go back on. Yeah. Um, so I think that was the only issue with it. If they made the tickets like maybe $100 a night, mm-hmm. it, it would be a little better. They probably would have been sold out every night yeah. if they lowered the prices. But I heard in order to like end up in the green to get back, like earn money back on their investment, they had to keep the prices that high. I don't know. If they were planning on keeping the, the Star Cruiser around for a while... I, th- I think over time, if they made the tickets like 250, 300, 400 mm-hmm. uh, per person, um, I think over time, over time, they'll prob- gain the money back. And it's like not that big of a loss. The Disney company is a multi billion dollar company. I like, think it's, it's a not- bigger loss that it's shutting down. Yeah. That's where you really take the L. So I don't know. We'll see what they do with it. I'm very surprised that they're actually shutting it down. Mm-hmm. Um, have yeah. you seen, have you seen, uh, any of this affect the Disney parks though? Mm, I wouldn't say so. Like no. I went the other day, it was just as busy. <laughs> okay, yeah. I think the theme parks are a little different. I feel like they could increase the price and people will would still go. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Except no. me, Disney. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I would love to go, bro. I want to take my girl to... I planned a whole vacation for us, and it was this big, magical Disney thing, and then I saw the price tag, and I was like, baby, I get free tickets to Universal. Let's just go there. <laughs> um, like me, I'm paying $130 a month for my pass. Are you a the, Magic Key or Super yeah, Key? Yeah, I bought the that? Inspire Magic Key, which is like their reformed uh, annual pass, and I don't like it. You have to reserve now to go into the theme park. They also got, what is it, Genie Plus, which oh, is like man. basically if you it's don't fast have pass, it. pass, but you have to pay. Yeah, and everybody <laughs> has it, right? So it kind of just like cancels out. Yeah. You're still waiting. Yeah. I think for a while the parks were great when they first reopened because they didn't have fast pass at all. Mm -hmm. The wait times were like 30 minutes max per ride. It was great. You didn't have to wait in line. Fast pass didn't slow down the, the lines, and it was great. I feel like that's where Disney was amazing. I feel like they could have just increased the prices from there, and no one would have been mad. Let's play a hypothetical real quick. Let's wave a magical Disney wand and make you CEO of Disney. Okay. This might be a hard <laughs> question to tackle, but what are some steps you would take to kind of dig Disney out of this hole they're in right now? That's a that's a big that's a business crazy, question. But that's let's a crazy question. Let's test your business skills that you just learned at UCLA. Let's see if you can <laughs> work your way out of this. I feel like they need to invest more into the parks around the country. Mm -hmm. They could uh, build more theme parks, like maybe in Texas. Universal's capitalizing on that, actually. Yeah, they're also capitalizing on Horror Nights with the year-long oh, yeah. event in Vegas. So I feel like they could take that initiative of expanding their theme parks more around the country, making it, uh, making Disneyland available uh, more around the world. Um, I feel like that's the only thing I would do. Uh, there's a lot of people that really can't afford to travel all the way to Disneyland or Disney World. So yeah. making it available to where they are locally is great. I mean, well, they got Disneyland Paris, Hong Kong, I think. They got, have, dude, Tokyo Disney Sea. You've heard of that? Oh, yeah. I want to go so bad. They have a giant mountain with a journey into the center of the earth ride. Yeah. It's crazy. Tokyo Disney Sea. And I think that why that park is so popping is because they're paying for the Disney rights, but they're not actually owned by Disney. That's they're, why they could keep uh, Splash Mountain open, actually. Yeah. yeah. So they have a lot of things that the other Disney parks don't necessarily have. And they're... I don't know, their attention to detail and their production value reminds me of, like, classic Disney. Oh, like, yeah. it's still there. You could still tell that, like, passion went into a lot of those projects. But they innovate onto everything they do. And they're very innovative. Yeah. They're great, I man. love what they do. I wish we could get that over here in, in uh, the U.S. But have you ever seen those uh, theme parks around the world? Like, in Europe, they have this uh, place called Magic Park or something. Mm -hmm. They have these crazy rides. They inspire over Disney rides, but they try to make it like 10 times better. They have crazy animatronics, crazy crazy effects, and uh, it's mind-blowing. It, like, I want to go out to Europe and, and explore some of those European theme parks. Oh, it's yeah. called Europa, Europa Park. Europa Park. I've heard of it. Yeah. I've heard of it. It's super cool. Dude, I'm... Like I said, I watch a lot of your videos, but I'm like super invested in the theme park landscape on YouTube. Like I like um, Defunct Land. I don't oh, know. Yeah. If, oh my I God, bro. Defunct I love his videos. Just like learning history of defunct rides and all that stuff. And just like a lot of, a lot of guys, Cali Bay, shout out him, bro. There's so many amazing content creators that cover theme parks. And speaking of traveling, in Orlando... Obviously, Universal is about to open Epic Universe in 2025, right? Mm -hmm. There, dude, there's so much happening in Orlando that I want to ask you, has the thought of moving to Orlando and covering the, the vast, like, growing landscape out there ever crossed your mind? Oh, yeah. Actually, next year, uh, I'm going to stay in, in the Florida area for about six months to cover the last... Uh, year of construction for epic epic universe okay uh moving on to when it opens so i can cover like basically everything leading up to the grand opening are you gonna be at the grand opening yeah i'll definitely i'll definitely try to let's make it. go bro um i'm gonna yeah. be hooked i'm gonna be on <laughs> jp land every day like what's happening dude because I, I watch i watch like updates and stuff about it now yeah and it's just a dirt lot and i'm like wow this is so interesting bro like <laughs> i'm actually so surprised that they haven't announced anything to that theme park it's opening in like Two years now. Mm -hmm. They haven't announced any of the lands. I feel like we already have an idea of what's coming just based on like the construction patterns. Like we know there's going to be like a dark universe or like a universal monsters theme land. Or, Which is crazy. Uh, how to train your dragon land with a roller coaster. Like it looks so cool. Uh, but I'm surprised they haven't announced anything yet. Yeah, they got their Super Nintendo World coming too with the Donkey Kong uh, 
coaster ride where like it, it simulates you jumping in like the mine carts and stuff, which is going to be crazy to see how that actually operates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. I'm exciting. Everybody should be excited to tune into JP's channel because that's big, bro. You're going to be out there for a year, you said? Uh, like half a year, something like that. Yeah, that's going to be so fun to watch, man. Orlando, dude. You've been to those parks, I imagine? Yeah, uh, many times. I love Florida. They're better, huh? Yeah, they're a lot something, larger. Something that <laughs> always larger. rubs me the wrong way, and I've just had to learn to accept it, is that the original parks are in California. So the original first flagship Disneyland here, right? The first Universal Studios when it was just the studio tour and and you got a, a scene of like, or you got a tour of like the studios pretty much. So I always wanted our parks to be better, but Florida just has so much land that they can do whatever the hell they want. I feel like we have that land too. Like if you go to Santa Clarita, it's just all dirt. Just build a theme park there. So expand. Expand. Yeah. They could do that. Or what they could also do is just move the studios uh, at Universal to Santa Clarita or somewhere else and just expand the theme park in that plot of land. That's been a big speculation, right? I think so. I, I think they've just been slowly removing sound stages, moving sound stages elsewhere and expanding the theme park in that plot of land. Yeah. Dude, also, this is like a, an opinion and a shared idea that gets passed around a lot. But behind Universal is a massive golf course with so much land, bro. And everybody's always like, why don't we just buy that land? Or like, why doesn't Universal just invest in that land and just expand the park to like crazy proportions? You so know? that golf course is, uh, it was originally owned by Bob Hope. And I'm pretty sure it was blood written to never sell that land to Universal. Really? And you know, I kind of respect that because there's people that spend millions of dollars to live right, right alongside of that go golf course. And imagine... They buy that golf course, and now you live in front of a big wall in a theme park. Yeah, your backyard area is roller coaster and, noises. You're trying yeah. to sleep, and all you hear is, ah! Go, 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 ah! So that, that's really, that's the really difficult part about building a roller coaster at Universal. They're just in the middle of studios. They're in the middle of a residential area, and I, that's what's probably limiting them on expanding with, with the roller coasters. Yeah, they're very limited on space. I'm actually surprised, but also impressed that they pulled off Super Nintendo World how they did. Oh, yeah. What are your thoughts on Super Nintendo World? I like it on some days and on other days I don't really like it. Like on a busy summer day, it's full of like iPad, like sticky iPad kids. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like literally impossible to get on the ride. It's impossible to play the video games unless you want to wait like an hour yeah. to do each experience. Like more power to you, but yeah. I visited on a day that wasn't even that busy and it still took us a good amount to do the little mini games or to do whatever, but I did enjoy it. Yeah. I had a great time. I think the theming is really, like, mind-blowing. It's so colorful. You feel like you're in, like, in the video game, you know? I feel like every time you walk into the entrance, you're just filled with awe. Like, you're just... The mountain is right in front of you. There's so much kinetic energy. It's so awesome. I love Nintendo World for that. Yeah. I feel like they should definitely add, like, a nighttime show in that area, though. What would you, you know, do? Like, maybe, like, a... Bro, projection I think, show. I think you posted that. I saw... Maybe you posted it or someone posted it where they were like, there's a projection at... Nintendo World, and it yeah. was like this Mario projection, kind of how they do with Harry Potter World, right? Yeah, yeah, that would be amazing. We could pull off a Fantasmic at Disney, have uh, Mario disappear, like go into a pipe, and then reappear at a, at a different area, and like build onto the story. I feel like that show would be insane if they were to do that. You know what else I think um, Nintendo World would? I don't. I'm not gonna say benefit from, but I would love to see it. Just kind of like the inner child in me. It would be. It bring back so much nostalgia, and I'd like to see how they do it. H H N. Luigi's Mansion. Oh, my God. That would be crazy. I don't know why they haven't done that already. Universal, I'm giving you the cheat codes, bro. Implement this. Oh, maybe that's coming this year. <laughs> that would be crazy. Dude, that yeah. would be so fun to see. Just a bunch of, like, Nintendo ghosts walking around. Yeah. Have and, a Bowser meet and greet. And just, like, Luigi, oh like, sucking up ghosts with his vacuum cleaner. That'd they did sick. it because they did it for Ghostbusters. Yeah. They had a very impressive scene where they got, like, the vacuum and the ghost is getting sucked in and stuff. Retheme it. To Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> I have a question for you. Since you were a Horror Nights character, have you ever played a victim or like a role that like involves talking? Never. No. Okay. I think that's partially why I do like HHN so much is because there's no talking. It's so loud in the houses. Like there's triggers, there's music, there's everything. So like I could yell under my mask and most of the times the guests won't even hear it, you know? And I think I'm, Maybe I could be wrong on this. Correct me if I'm wrong. But I think other parks 
or like little haunts, it can kind of come across corny sometimes when the scare actor is talking to you. And they're like, yep. hey, are you afraid? Ooh, I bring the terror. It's like, bro, relax. No, but what <laughs> I meant by that is like, uh, you know, in the Ghostbusters maze, they had, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, I don't know their names, but they had one of the Ghostbusters, like, disgusting blob. Mm-hmm. I'll have to hold him myself. And then he just like shoots that. And or the like, the actor even, does the same thing all night. Yeah. I've never played those roles. Or like um, a victim role. Like, that's so boring. Yeah, dude. I do, I wouldn't want to do it. I would do it for like a night or two. And a lot of people, a lot of scare actors, actually, if they get tired or hurt in one of their roles, sometimes they will for a night or for however long it takes for them to recover. They'll do a blackout role. They'll do a victim role just to kind of like not be so physically demanding. Okay. So there is, they're fun, but not for me, bro. I'm trying to scare everybody. That's why I'm there is to scare the pants (laughs) off of everyone, dude. Just imagine sitting there all night being sawed up by Freddy or whatever. Just being like, ah! Yeah, that's the one reason. Oh, last year I worked at uh, uh, Six Flags' Fright Fest. Did you really? Yeah, I only did it for one night and I quit. They had me as a victim on a bed. I was like, yeah, I would have quit too. (laughs) My first of all, I lost my voice because they don't have like triggers. Second of all, it was so boring. I was just sitting there and no one would get scared. They'd just laugh at me. I'm like, okay, this is demoralizing. I don't want to do it anymore. Six Flags also attracts a completely different crowd, though. A bunch of Edgars. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it, but it's facts, bro. <laughs> I, I just had to say it. Literally facts. Yeah. Did you go to their, their recent Summer Scream event? No. I went. Was it good? No. Okay. But I enjoyed my time there. It was kind of like supercharged it was so bad that it was good so bad that it was enjoyable i saw like videos online they had like djs everywhere and yeah it was more of like scare actors dancing and having fun more than anything i think that's kind of why i didn't enjoy it as much is because i think the theming was a little finicky and janky yeah it was like i don't know if this is supposed to be scary or if it's supposed to be a party and then you ask them and they're like oh it's both and i'm like poor execution but it was fun for what it was. I, I, I'm such a fan of horror and I'm such a fan of haunts that like in the middle of the year, I'm going to go. Are you going to uh, Midsummer Scream? Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll yeah. see you there, bro. Uh, you going all three days? No, I'm probably just going to do the, the day that they have the Horror Nights panel. Same. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Dude, um, you should have your own panel at, at Midsummer Scream. Like I can talk in front of a YouTube channel with like thousands of people watching, but in person with about, like thousands of people in front of me, I don't know if I could do it. Dude, that's funny because I do want to talk about this a little bit. Okay. So recently, you had a video where you were talking about switching up your content a little bit. You were mm-hmm. like, I love theme parks. It's always going to have a special place in my heart. But I want to experiment with other things, you know? Right. And you released a video pretty much where you were doing like street style interviews. Mm-hmm. And you were on the Santa Monica Pier and you would just approach strangers and ask them outlandish out-of-pocket questions, right? What do you, like, what was your audience's reaction to the switch up? Was it positive? Was it a little mixed? It was a little mixed. You know, like some people were like, you know, I'll watch your theme park content, but I'll still support you. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there were people that were like didn't really care. Um, but I really, I'm, I'm thinking about how to expand my YouTube channel because I feel like I, I can't do theme parks all my life. Mm-hmm. I, they're just not going to be changing that much. I think, feel like over time it's just going to slow down. And I'm scared for rainy days where I just can't, put out content you know yeah um so i'm i'm trying to switch up the style a little bit involve uh myself a little more into the videos uh drag people more into my personal life have like little daily vlogs and stuff and um i don't know i feel like i'm, I'm trying uh it's, it's just a little difficult so uh Right now, I'm switching up my theme park content. So I'm applying the same formats, but into theme parks. So I'm going to be walking up to people in the theme parks, asking them what their favorite ride is or like weird questions in the theme parks too. Okay. If you ever need a paid actor, bro, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to try to try to do something like that. I've been putting out daily content now. I'm trying to make myself a little more relevant. Mm-hmm. In school, um, I learned that uh, branding is very important. Massive, bro. And um, and I have noticed that your branding has 
hit an, like a new level. Like yeah. you got the little animated JP on like your headers and your flyers and stuff. And it, it looks really good. So I, you've always had a pretty strong brand though, but I'm starting to see the vision like fully come together. So now I'm trying to capitalize on Instagram. That's mainly why I started posting a little more. I'm like, okay, uh, trying to, target a wider audience, uh, post more on my stories, try to look a little more like a, a daily vlogger mm -hmm. rather than just someone that does theme park updates. Like I, I don't know. I don't want to be that one person that only does theme park updates and people only come to me for that. Yeah. So uh, I'm switching my image up a bit. And in school, I learned that people will start uh, being a little more invested into your brand when you, when they establish a certain level of trust. So I'm like, okay, so I'll start posting more Instagram stories, more Instagram posts, trying to stay a little more relevant in a platform that people constantly used, uh, use. Uh, uh, earlier, I mentioned attention span. Gone for everybody. Yeah, it's gone for everyone. So I feel like if I can establish myself on a different platform, I can uh, take people into different parts of my content because uh, I feel like once they're hooked in, they're hooked in. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll follow me everywhere. Uh, I, I've noticed an increase in viewers and stuff too, an uh, increase on like fans. And um, I try to stay my uh, humble as, as humble as I can. And I try to stay genuine. And um, I feel like that's what really separates me out of the other creators right now. Yeah. Uh, that I'm trying to be a real person and trying to include them in my real life. Like the FA, the FAQ I do, uh, the anonymous questions, yeah. they could just be a little, they could ask whatever they want to ask. And, I'll and just they do, to they it. definitely be asking whatever <laughs> they want to ask. Yeah. You know, I, I feel like that's the best way of starting a YouTube channel. Now just start posting content on Instagram and then allowing that fan base to transpire onto YouTube. Okay. And then with shorts, I'm a little, I don't really care what I post. I'm just, I'm just, trying to get more followers out of shorts and stuff that seems to be the route for a lot of influencers huh especially like back in the vine days you had all these people that got big on vine and then mm -hmm. vine was like all right we're, we're shutting it down and they were like why'd they shut down it wasn't monetizable i see if you, if you remember vine it didn't have any ads it didn't have any way to make money off of the app so i think it just kind of it was destined to fail but it launched so many careers yeah that it was like logan paul yeah logan paul jake paul david dobrik like everybody started on vine right but that's what I was getting at is they start on these platforms now with TikTok. There's a lot of TikTokers that are like, I'm trying to make real money off this. And they'll switch, their, they'll bring their audience or at least transfer a good chunk of it to YouTube, right? Which is crazy because now YouTube's kind of dying out too. So it's yeah. like, it's weird to see. We're in a weird position where we're like, what's the next best thing? Yeah. TikTok is dead. To me, it's dead completely. Really? I don't even try to post on TikTok. That's, bro, that's a hot take too. I think I it's a like, lost cause. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people are, that's the one they're striving for the most is TikTok. Everyone's like, you need to be on TikTok. Make a TikTok, 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 TikTok. I don't know. I think I'm just too invested in shorts. Maybe that's why I'm saying that. Like shorts, I've noticed like real growth. I've noticed like like people that just keep coming back and it's, it's weird. With yeah. TikTok, I would get a viral and that's it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get those followers uh, engaged with my content. Okay, that makes sense. And I don't have a massive audience at all. I'm working on it. I'm building it. I'm uh, learning as I go, you know. But I do notice that my TikTok shorts, or not TikTok shorts, sorry, this is not even a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like my a, a, a fucking boomer, bro. I sound like my mom. Like, what's this Insta face TikTok short you guys are doing? No, but um, when I post YouTube shorts, they get the most views. They don't get the most engagement. I get the most engagement on TikTok, but I get the most views with shorts. So. I feel like YouTube actually gives creators a chance. It gives small creators a chance. Yeah. And that's what I love about YouTube shorts uh, because now you could just, you could prove your, your skills and stuff. So what I recommend doing, I'm going to give you like a little tip now. What I recommend <laughs> doing. JP roadmap, bro. I'm over here like more notes. <laughs> <laughs> when you're editing your shorts, uh, make them vertical, make them really quick paced. Uh, try to start off with a topic that uh, will lead to curiosity. Start off with a questionable title. Um, and then I, in school, I learned about SEO, uh, ranking in search. And I've, uh, I've noticed uh, an increase with that too. When I'm writing my descriptions out on my YouTube shorts, uh, I'm ranking in search. So now, now people aren't only seeing me from my For You page, they're seeing me when they're searching Universal Studios Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, if you type in Universal Studios Hollywood, 
all the shorts on there are me because no one else is really taking advantage over that. Over that, I feel like I shouldn't say that now, but <laughs> we'll edit that out, bro. <laughs> we'll just beep it. We'll, we'll do something, bro. <laughs> try to hook your, try to hook the shorts viewers into your content, and mm -hmm. you also have to consider the the demographic that is just a bunch of like ten to seventeen year olds watching uh, YouTube shorts. So you have to make it like a silly question. Uh, add a lot of visuals, make it super fast paced. And, and that's where I've seen growth. Like if you yeah, watch yeah. any of my, uh, edited videos, you'll see that like, I don't have a clip for more than like a minute and a half or I mean a second and a half. It's always changing. It's always changing, always adding a new visual, always adding an engaging like song in the background. Yeah. Um, let's say I do have a clip of me talking. I like, Add keyframes, like zoom in a little bit, zoom out, um, switch visuals. That is, that's that's how you grow now. And yeah, um, I, feel I feel like, like you're so excited to edit now. <laughs> yeah, well, it, here's the thing: is like the videos do have to be so like, doom, like almost meme -y to a point where it's like uh, it's constantly something's getting your attention to keep you hooked. You know. Another thing I noticed is YouTube will promote your short even more when they see higher retention. So if people are watching your um, you're short for more than 75%, uh, percent, mm -hmm. uh, they will start pushing it out more and more and more. And if it's less than 75%, they'll stop pushing it out. But um, I've noticed that most of my content is evergreen now uh, because most of my... Uh, what is evergreen? Evergreen, like they'll continuously push it out even though oh, you okay even so, though you posted it like six months ago they'll still continue pushing it out because your retention your audience retention is over a hundred percent i'm looking at my shorts now i'm seeing uh crazy numbers i'm seeing like 150 percent retention that means they're watching my my whole short and then they're watching it a little more of it so they, they watch it a second time okay that's good dude and when they see that they'll just continuously push it out and uh i feel like that's leading to my growth as well yeah. that's cool these are all things like i feel I, like i started i should start a master class like teaching. dude and you could honestly make a lot of money doing yeah. it i asked you before like off camera that i said you should start a podcast dude because like obviously you're pretty good at speaking you're not here just like completely like shy and just no I, I feel like i started off a little shy i'm like oh this is a little new dude it's every single podcast with every guest the first like 15 minutes is kind of just like we're getting it's to rough. know each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, And then after that, you just get into it. But um, yeah, man, that's a great... And I see a lot of influencers doing it too, especially in fitness. They'll be like, oh, if you're trying to get the shredded physique, buy my course, do this. Like everybody's shifting into courses and no, stuff. No, I hate, I hate when fitness people like shift into courses. Like just but make long form videos. I'll watch it. <laughs> yeah, but I feel like for you, it kind of makes sense. Because like yeah. you are, bro, you're super young. And if you ask any young kid right now, like what do you want to be when you grow up? 15, 20 years ago, probably would have been like, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a doctor. I want to be an NBA player. Now, every single kid is like, I want to be a YouTuber. I want to be an influencer. I want to do this. And you've actually done it. So you have yeah. a demographic of kids that have, you You are basically the, the number one job people want. And people will pay to learn how to do that. So if you started a, a master class or a course or something, whoo. the paychecks are rolling in, bro. Don't thank me. No need to give me a cut, dog. Just make it happen. I don't know. I'm always scared about giving the secret out, you know, bro. Cause I feel like then people are going to take my job, but I don't want to be gatekeeping. Like I think yeah. when I'm like tw in my mid twenties, when I already have an established audience, I feel like I could start teaching people how to do what I do. Yeah. It's kind of like that, that mindset where it's like, let me get to a successful enough point where I can start helping others. out. Yeah. You know, like you I want to, I, I want to retire by, I'm like by 35. I want to have kids. Mm -hmm. I want to be married and I want to retire at 35. You're on the right track, bro. <laughs> hopefully you got a successful business youtube channel you're talking to somebody that leads to kids <laughs> <laughs> but one i, I do want to touch on the content switch up one other little thing i was interested in obviously it's not just you anymore you're not just by yourself vlogging or you're not just uh talking to a camera you're talking to other people did that scare you a little bit at first was were you like off like did it put you off in any way? I think I was on a really good track until COVID hit. Uh, after COVID hit, I just became completely antisocial. Mm -hmm. I was posting a few videos here and there, but I didn't really like, I just went into my own shell. I was really like depressed. 
uh, because the theme parks closed. I was out of a job. I was just like home playing video games. Yeah, I lost a lot of weight and then I gained a lot of weight. And um, I feel like that ruined me a little bit. Like I used to be a much better speaker. Um, mm -hmm. uh, now I need to go to like, uh, what is it called? Um, speech therapy. I used to talk so much better before COVID and now after COVID because I was so anti-social and I was so in my shell that I lost my speaking skills. Well, you're doing great right now. Buddy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I've gotten better. I think. Uh, I think listening to podcasts help a little bit. Shout out to frequency. Frequency. That's what we're here for, bro. If Am I going to sign this wall? You are going to sign this wall. Awesome. <laughs> wow, foreshadowing, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we could wrap this up. Put a nice little bow on everything. You've kind of talked about it already, but like, what's the future for the JP project looking like? What is new content people can expect? What's uh, What's the future hole, man? You know, I there's this uh, channel called Mr. Beast. Of, I haven't heard of it. What? I'm kidding, bro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just like the biggest YouTube channel yeah. right now. Uh, so he, what he's doing, and I really like that he's doing this, is uh, he's translating his videos into different languages. So I started doing that a little bit. Uh, but I need to start like a JP Land in, in Espanol or in French. Oh, you speak Spanish? Uh, a little bit. You, <laughs> but sorry, I would you, most I, likely hire like a voice actor or have I, AI do it for AI me. AI JP. I was about to say, he yeah. can speak perfect Spanish, I imagine. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thinking of doing that, uh, I've talked about it with my buddy Dustin. And um, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Dude, that's cool. Maybe in like a year from now, you'll start seeing JP Lan in Espanol. Mm -hmm. <laughs> El JP Lan. <laughs> Hola. <laughs> Me llamo JP Landia 21. <laughs> it's like in go. Universal Studios. Vamos a divertido un poco. That's impressive, bro. Yeah. I'm sold. I'm in there like, <laughs> yo quiero ver. Dime, JP. What's happening at Universal Studios? No chemic, huh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that, I keep saying that on TikTok. Save that for Six Flags, bro. That's <laughs> not energy. Well, dude, for the viewers, the audience, and anyone that wants to stay in touch with you or follow what you're doing where can they find you can find me at jpland21 on everything jpland21 yep Perfect. i don't know where the 21 came out of i was gonna ask that but i you know i started jpland out of a minecraft world when i was like nine years old <laughs> did you make an amusement it. park in yeah. minecraft did you yeah, really it's called jpland well guys be sure to check out his content if you're into theme parks as much as i am this dude will give you the rundown on everything you need to know and what's to come so jpland Thanks for coming on, dude. It was great. It was yeah, so much dude. fun. It was a pleasure having you, man. Thank you. That was fun. Yeah, dude. Podcasts are great. <laughs> <laughs>